So let's transition to the best moves of the year. Do you have any honorable mentions that you want to mention? Say. Let me quickly power through them. Honorable mentions. Um, so I have 20 movies to talk about in the best category. Okay. 20 um, movies. Eight of them are honorable mentions and 12 of them made it onto the list. Okay. And, the, and, the, and the criteria that I separated the movie movies by was honorable mentions were 7 out of 10, best of the year were 8 out of 10 or better. So you fucking better. saw a lot of 8 out of 10 movies like made in 12? Jesus yeah. Christ. You had a lot of time. I guess I was. I guess I was. What have you been it. doing in Estonia? <laughs> Just watching like this one after another. Well, in total, I saw like forty movies. Jeez. I guess my my bar is too low. No, but these movies are great. All right, so let's start with the honorable mentions then. Uh, honorable mentions. I, I got upgrade. What is that? Do you know what that is? No, I have no idea. You fucking pleb. All right, upgrade is is the better Venom basically. It's a movie about um. Again, um, it's 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 uh, slightly unoriginal sci-fi, mm -hmm. uh, but it has a great great um, concept. Um, wait, do I have to? St uh, okay, I wasn't prepared to explain the plot. Okay, <laughs> just just say me, tell me the basics of the plot. So the plot of Upgrade is basically. Uh, this guy um, gets into a car accident and he's fully paraplegic from now okay. on. He can't move a thing apart from his face. And all of a sudden, uh, from a guy that he knows, I believe, he gets transplanted a thing that now, an AI that now controls his body for him. And he's able to acquire superhuman strength and basically the movie kicks off from there. And it has a voice in his head that he figures out. That's an interesting concept, though. Does it sound any? Does it sound familiar? Well, I know it sounds familiar. I know. It goes yes, it. it does sound like Venom, but and and it is better by far. But yeah. All right, let's continue. Avengers. It's a little. What did you like? Little this indie movie. movie called, what 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 was Avengers. the movie? That you saw that you I was liked. trashed and I liked the movie. The jokes were absolutely awful. <laughs> and they... You're saying <laughs> <laughs> you don't say well. Uh but you know. It's it's dumb fun. Okay, let's continue. Okay, uh first reformed. Uh first reformed, yeah, a movie that I expected to like a lot more than I actually did. And that's gonna be true with Quite a few coming up. Mm -hmm. All right. But first reformed, definitely the best aspect of it was the cinematography. Other than that, though, I didn't find the script too engaging, and Ethan Hawke's performance was was all right. Mm. Okay. Yeah, just. Uh, I I know a lot of people have been creaming over this movie, but I just couldn't connect with it. I guess. Next one is a uh, Russian movie mm -hmm. called Leto or Summer. Okay. About school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. About okay. my boy Victor Tsoi. Um, for the three people that are watching this, it's a it's a Russian movie, a biography. It's not a straight up biography. Is it it's, is it about a biography of Victor Soy or about the group Kino? I think I would say it's both. It's about the beginning of his uh, musical career, but it's also it, it also features some other musicians from that kind of Russian punk scene. Of right. The 80s. It's it's really it's it's engaging on that part just to fig just to know what what his life was like mm -hmm. and what what the whole kind of Russian youth sentiment because in because in many ways he he transcends just himself and he kind of from what it, even my parents told me is that he kind of represents the culture of youth of that time mm -hmm. and to see that him how to how to how to explain this him experiencing his uh, his him expressing his attitude towards life and then trans um, 
trans uh, putting it into his music and then his music affects other people and reflects their feelings too kind of it's a, about him but it's also about society at that time and the the dissatisfaction that the youth was experiencing towards the Soviet Union so what the movie was about it was telling about the story how he lived through because uh, yeah. as i know him he was a very uh, shy guy he was it's a story about him and a love triangle between him and um, a woman who was also uh, at the time with another musician, um, Mike Nominka. Um Little known these days, but you know. And a fun fact, the movie was actually mostly... Uh, told through her memories mm -hmm. and later disputed by many of the people who were kind of um, in that scene like uh, Boris Gerbyshekov he um, he actually declined to be in the movie whatsoever but being portrayed in the movie mm -hmm. and um, yeah I get it like... great movie actually just not in the top best All right. list Let's continue. Number 16, Isle of Dogs. Isle of Dogs. I love dogs, but I didn't love this movie. That was very funny. Please cut that out. Um, um, yeah, I just, again, with, with Wes Anderson, I'm just not feeling it, you know? You know what I'm it's saying? It's pretty high score, 7 out of 10, though. Sure, but... I, but 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 considering how good the animation is, I was, it had a lot a lot of a, a lot higher of a ceiling for me than just a seven out of ten. And again, time and time again, I find myself so much more intrigued by Wes Anderson, the filmmaker, than I am by Wes Anderson, the person, because he is a great filmmaker. But holy shit. Are his characters boring as fuck? I understand the problem that you are facing is that there his he's going style over substance, and that kind of like you're not watching the sort of the you don't have experience the movie that as you want to because the way you're you're not connected with the movie at all. I don't connect with his characters and. It's been the case in Moonrise Kingdom. It's been the case with Isle of Dogs. The only one where I was kind of able to get over it was uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. And that wasn't even... His you know, character. Yeah, I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure he, he, he wrote the character of Fox or Mr. Fox, whatever, as his own. But still, that was the only one where I liked it. So, honorable mention, but... Fantastic animation. All right. Well. Oh, I'm still going. Okay. Are oh, you still have yeah, something yeah. to say about the movie? No, no, no. I'm, I'm still going. Tell me about your opinion about the movie was racist towards Japanese people. Oh hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. How was. did you felt about it? Did you feel like? I stormed out of the theater. I asked for my money back. I started yelling in Japanese, as the weeaboo that I am, and. It was a great day. I mean, it was disgusting that a white guy just allowed himself outrageous to film about Japanese guys. It's like outrageous. What was he thinking? Anyway, number fifteen. <laughs> okay. Uh, Annihilation. The, well, well, I guess come on, man. I guess number six of uh, honorable mentions. What? What are you saying? I thought it would be a little bit higher. Oh, you you ain't seen shit in twenty eighteen, <laughs> and you're talking on me. It's an honorable mention. Get over it. Annihilation. Great movie. Suspenseful. Great scene with the bear. The man bear pig. Shout out to South Park. And. And. Yeah. I like the fact the movie was sort of like. It was a, sort of like a unique experience. With being with those characters, going into this world of unknown to oh, explore. Yeah. Great, great um, stalker parallels. Yeah, sure. 
And the ending was the best. Part. The ending was fantastic. It was abstract. I felt nobody would see that coming, by the way. Yeah, I felt things that I felt while watching two thousand one. That kind of abstraction. Uh, yeah. Maybe Kubrick saw like a glimpse of death in that, and that's what he projected. Oh, I, I, I totally. The ending of two thousand one is totally one of the most mind blowing things, and that's not even like doing it any justice saying it like that yeah he truly captures like dread and existential and the experience of death but anyway annihilation doesn't doesn't really go for death necessarily but it, it captures the same kind of abstraction of 2001 of, of like things that we I think it's partially but mostly I think the movie focuses on exploration and sense of not understanding of sort of like going to the unknown to explore the wonder whatever it is and the lighthouse is a representation of that too yeah whatever your meaning is the I don't necessarily think there the is a sort of a meaning I just the movie I'm itself I'm not sure either but you know the movie itself was engaging in the sense that it was like just because they were interesting characters, you just was interested in watching them going through this world, yeah. where they were going stuff. The Not House. necessarily, uh, it didn't was a masterpiece because it has moments that are dumb and didn't really quite make sense. But overall, I think what he was going for, it sort of succeeded. Is that what I interpreted from it? I liked it too. Uh, next is Under the Silver Lake. Why is it so fucking low in that now? What do you mean so low? I liked it. I liked it a lot. Nah, you didn't like it <laughs> enough. Um, it was the weirdest movie of the year, for sure. And it, it's, it's honestly one of the weirdest movies that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And not that I haven't seen many weird movies. I have seen... Um, Fucking El Topo, I've seen Hausu, I've seen um I can't I can't remember from the top of my head, but you know. Movies like I've just met, named, they are weird from the from the get-go. And they are upfront about their weirdness. And they they don't surprise you in this in that way. But a movie like Under the Silver Lake is just as weird, but it's deceptively so. And it looks on the surface like a normal movie, right. but it takes you about five, maybe fifteen minutes to really start tripping out really and so it's like being on acid right and 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 for that reason it's 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 not it, it, it's all the more effective for it and it's and it's mm, yeah it's um it, it is a trip out and it won it's just a fantastic one that all right great great stuff go on uh roma Number 13, honorable mention. The movie that actually won for best director. And yeah. best picture. It didn't win in best picture. Oh, wait, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> we should have made another podcast about the fucking Oscars. But no, no. I mean, we can talk about Green Book. Uh, there's not much to say. And you know, for some reason, I didn't put it here. But oh. That's that, just that like just mediocre goes to show. movies. That just goes to show. It's just... It didn't even make it into, into the mediocre movies. You forgot about it. Anyway, Roma. Again, um, I couldn't connect with it really. I, I see what the people are, are, are uh, taking out of it. I, I hear the opinions, but for me, I couldn't connect with it. And Well, it seems like you connected much better than Annihilation. So it's in the... And Silver so Lake, for some reason. Well, I think... Uh, Why did you put it that high, then? Well, not lower? Well, because the filmmaking of it is amazing. And, I mean, as far as Annihilation goes, that movie doesn't really... Isn't really... Doesn't really connect with me on a personal level either that much. It doesn't really say much about humanity as much as Roma does. But Roma, I just, I just wish I, I, I connected more with the main character. And she felt kind of neglected by the movie in my opinion because the the style of it is so um wide lens kind of observatory 
kind of style of filmmaking. And it, I just wanted more connection to the main character. It felt like the main character was Mexico of that time or Mexico City. And uh, it just, I wish it was more traditional in that sense, I guess. But I see the genius of it and my list doesn't really matter, but you know, Roma is gonna stand the test of time. It just, I don't know, I like 7 out of 10. Okay. Continue. That's it. That's it for me, for my honorable mentions. Honorable mentions, okay. I don't have an honorable mention. I have a mediocre mentions. That could... Go for it. Uh, I watched The Widows, which was, what was his name? I skipped it. Uh, it was a good, did you skip it? It was nothing special. Steve. Uh, my Steve boy McQueen. Steve. He's an interesting director. I will talk more about the director than the movie he made. Because he made a movie that's Hunger and he made Shame. Both movies. Fantastic. Shame was a fantastic movie. Hunger was an interesting uh, movie because it's, you can see it's a very low budget movie. Like they clearly had like a hundred thousand pounds or like even less than that. And it's the way you handle with the uh, tools that you have. Oh, yeah. And you're trying to use it as much as creative. And you can see there's talent there a lot. Shame is sort of like a fantastic and a very depressing movie, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Like, feel very sorry for the main character because you kind of feel like he's struggle. With the widows. It feels like he was just hired by the studio to just to make a movie. And I can see that. It it's was, and sadly, it's like there is some. Uh, it was the most mainstream movie of, of his entire catalog by far, right? Yeah, but he only made three movies, like Four. feature. Four. Twelve Years a Slave. Oh fuck! I forgot about that movie. But it's just. Is it because you deny slavery? <laughs> Who said that? Maybe I was for it. All right, all right. Uh, the problem, the problem with the widow is that, in my opinion, is that the question is like why the character w that he showed didn't were that interesting at all. They were not. Uh, and by the way, this proves that why Neil Neil Nielsen is not fucking racist because he was hooking up with a black chick. Oh yeah, because. He's sure, fucking going sure. into it with tongue. Yes, you see everything. I want to see it now. By the way, uh, do you care about spoilers or not? Can I just spoil? Honestly, not really. Uh, the chances of me watching it at this point are very low. Okay, so the whole point of the beginning of the movie is that four uh, the main husbands died. And so the women had to... Uh, oh yeah, I knew that. Well, I'm going to get to the spoilers. So... Uh, so the women had to do the highs themselves. And they still, and the main uh, woman, who is the black chick, who is with Neil Nixon. Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Uh, she was her by herself with the money that she stole. And then you have Neil Nixon coming from nowhere. And what happened is that he killed three of his uh, own guys. And uh, he set them up and he stole the money. Now, in the movie, they sort of represent that they love to, with each other to the death. Like, but for some reason, out of nowhere, he has to be the bad guy. And he almost killed uh, her because of the money. And for me, that was like the most stupidest part of the movie. Mm. Because it, because they didn't establish that in your, in your view. Well, they established that they were in but amazingly love because they had also a son who got shot by the police. So that shows the brutality of the police in America. Oh yeah, social commentary. So uh, there should be like a Black Lives Matter somewhere in the movie, but that was just out of it. Didn't fit. It didn't make sense why he would do it. Why would he betray her in any way? So I thought that was dumb. But there was one cool shot that i never seen ever before. Because in the USA, there are uh, two different districts. You can see a ghetto and a rich one are just like next to each other. Mm 
Mm -hmm. They're literally like that. And there was like one shot of a car just driving from one uh, getter seat to a rich one. And it was a pretty cool shot. But other than that, I have nothing more to say about the movie. Sad. Then uh, Vice with uh, Kristen Bale playing Bro, Dick Cheney. what in the fuck did you see that? Just, I just like the trailer. It seems like a pretty cool movie, but overall... I like The Big Short, but I... Yes. Oh, continue. Well, The Big Short was much better. I thought The Vice was much better than Big Short. The first half of the movie, I was like, well, why is this movie not being praised as much? And then you can understand when you watch the second half. It's like... Mm -hmm. It's like it doesn't fit. It was started to be very boring. And you just didn't care at all. So, the vice was clearly a miss, and I don't understand why it. Do you think they relied on too much that people, on the fact that perhaps they thought that people would like the story and be engaged with it just on its own, without doing too much to it? You mean like if the way the style of it, or do you think yeah, like do you think that? Um, cause I, cause I've heard a lot of people complain that this movie is just boring and not interesting. Uh, so do you think that perhaps the filmmakers rely too much on the story itself, that people just be engaged with the fact that it's a... I think the problem with the movie is the style, overall. There's an interesting story because Dick Cheney is not, it's an interesting, uh, per, a personal character to make a story of. And that's why I said I like the first half of the movie because that mm -hmm. was the focus of the movie. But then in the second half of the movie, they start thinking about like how he manipulated Bush in the presidency, and then I don't know how Sam Rockwell got a nomination for his Oscar because in, in the movie he was only like five minutes. He's barely in the movie. What was the plot of it, by the way? It was. Basically, the first half of the movie was him rising into the power. Uh huh. Okay. That was like. Oh, I thought the whole movie was about his pr uh, vice presidency. No, it's just the other half. That's the boring part oh, of his vice presidency. That's. See, I didn't know that. So yeah, that's my take on the movie. Very interesting in the first half. Very boring. And uh, uh, Karen, uh, what was his name? The fucking British guy who's a uh, critique. Mark Kermod. Mark Kermod. He basically said it. Like, the first half was, uh, like, good and the other one. So if you're interested, listen to his review. So, yeah, that's my take on Vice. Then we have Ready Player One. A stable brick movie. Don't have much to say to it. Then Black KK Clansman. Oh, boy. That came out just a mediocre movie for me. Anna Driver was the only one who was interesting to me. Well, yeah, because he's white. And, of course. But he was playing a Jew, so that brought oh, some okay. problem to the movie. That's brave. Okay. I don't know why I put this in mediocre and kind of sad, but it's fucking Aquaman. I fucking love it. What in the fuck is wrong with you? I All right, I'm, I'm not going to dog you too much, because I have Venom in my, um, in, right in the middle of my list. And, st and and trash like Bohemian Rhapsody too. But, you know. All right, but and Skyscraper that was my guilty pleasure of the year. Skyscraper. I should I should I should watch this movie Skyscraper. I thought I would, if I would watch it, I would put it in my bad list so I just make sure that I have a complete top ten bad list of the year. Uh, I think I do it later. And. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The mediocre movies. I can get you shot out with your first two uh, best movies, and then I go with the tenth. First two best movies. Star is born. Um. Fuck. Do I have anything to say about that? I'm gonna say one thing because I actually really like the movie. This Take movie was very. Uh, well, it's my top. I think it's a fifth or sixth in my list. Oh, the movie you was more than me. Well, you had more movies to watch. I give it an eight. Me too. I give it an eight too. I think or a seven. Anyway, the point is, I was surprised by Bradley Cooper 
direction. I didn't expect oh, yeah. him to do this very well. And the opening scene was fucking amazing. Because... Yeah, absolutely. Unli like, unlike like what you see in uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, you have a wide shot of the audience showing up. And you have that. He, what he did, it was something unusual. And I was kind of like... And I was liking it. He did a tracking shot yes. of him walking on the stage... And that camera was like one shot. And I was like, holy shit, this is fucking amazing. Like, you're seeing the perspective from his of performing and to the huge crowd of people. And I was like, and by the way, the music was not that bad. The mu music that he was performing. That was supposed to be kind of bad? That was supposed to be like more commercial, right? Uh, they were fine. There are some he, interesting... He, he plays two styles of music in that movie. One is like the more popular kind of rock what what he's like? I thought he was doing just country music, from. Well, there's no. I, I would say there's two styles. He's because he's for the huge crowds. He plays the um, kind of rock music, kind of popular stuff. Mm -hmm. But then he, when he meets Gaga, he um, he goes back to, and, and and in one of the scenes he performs a country song, and then one one of his managers, I think it was uh, Sam Elliott, he says like he hasn't played like that in a long time, mm -hmm. so. That's the that's country music is where his heart is at in the movie, but yeah. Well, in any way, my biggest take of the uh, movie is that the characters were very interesting uh, for me. I like Sam Elliott for some reason. He was Same. just and there's a, a interesting dyma dynamic between him and Bradley Cooper. Uh, for sure, yeah. And there's Age. something that you don't see very much in movies. Like I could see this happening because in the movie they were talking about his father got uh, him born very late at his age, and yes. I was like, imagine like, hey, like if I like thirty year old and my father just got a another child, like I would mm. be like in my seventies when he's gonna be in forties. So there's a huge age difference, and I was like, sure. that that's like an interesting take of it, and. And plus, yeah. the whole uh, thing about like characters, they kind of acted naturally, in my opinion. Very much so. And the, and the portrayal of addiction and alcoholism was, was pretty... Uh, I think it went a little bit too much because when he was drunk in that stage, when she got an award and he was like kind of like falling down that's i, I think okay, that yeah. a little bit too much because i think that's that's how you act when you you when you've had a, a leader absent <laughs> i think in that moment they would just take him away right away but he they just continued with it and i thought that was probably a little bit too much but overall <laughs> in my opinion i think the movie the way he did it Bradley Cooper i'm praising him fantastic so, yeah very good job as a first movie I'm looking forward to his, more of his stuff. The yeah. thing is, I think he's going to do the same thing. I don't think he's he going to progress. Like, I think it's... For some reason, I but feel... You, but, but a different style of movie. I think this is the same style of movie. Like, it doesn't have to be country, like, song. It could be another love story. I don't know. That I have he's more like, faith in him than that. But, you know. I guess time will tell. Uh, number 11? Number 11 for me? Yes. Uh, first Man. Uh, How was that movie, by the way? Like It was great. Man was first. <laughs> <laughs> he was. <laughs> it's a fact. Uh, he got to the moon. He got it. Got him. Well, one did, was, or, or what's did the he? point of actual watching? Or did he? Or did he? Is there, is there an alternative? The actor who plays Stanley Kubrick was great. Is there Stanley? There was no Stanley Kubrick in the movie. Yeah, there was. Who was playing Stanley? Who directed the fucking fake moon landing then? <laughs> Dumbass. I don't know. I don't know. I seriously don't know. And where did they film then? Huh? What was the depiction of the moon landing then? Miramax Studios. What was the Miramax Studios at that time? Huh? Fucking LA? I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't the moon. <laughs> Honestly, the way they affect the moon landing in this movie is fantastic. I praise them for that. My just question is how portrayal of Ryan Gosling. It it is so Stone. great because in the movie they never like give you a hint that it's um, fake. They <laughs> are you continue with the bullshit or are you? 
the way they film the scenes is as if the moon landing actually happened. Okay. But obviously we all know that. You know, it's kind of meta. They're filming it is. of a fake moon landing in a studio where they actually filmed the moon landing. And, uh, and, um... So they are faking of about a fake. <laughs> and it was so engaging. You know, um, the scenes on the actual, in the actual spaceship, I, I... Did you see it, by the way? No, I haven't. Oh, you fucking pleb. Um, so the scenes in the ships were, for me, the best part, because in... Uh, I don't want to spoil it. Well, it's not a spoiler, but... You by know. the way, is it similar to Apollo 13? Movie? I ain't never seen that. Okay, fine. I am not cultured. And um, the scenes fucker. in First Man of the spaceships taking off is... Um, well, not just taking off, but being in them, too, is, um, is great because you never see outside the spaceship mm -hmm. it's just inside and the camera is shaking and it's so immersive in that sense because that's just how they felt because they they had these tiny windows it was dark not much light came through it there wasn't apparently they didn't think to put any lamps in there it was dark shaking and you have no idea you you are in a giant metal construction that is the bolts are fucking shaking too Shit. And, uh, it's it puts you right in there and for that it, it is a theater exclusive kind of movie meaning that in a home theater unless you got a great sound you couldn't possibly reproduce it one day when i get enough money i will just build my own theater in my house so do it i'll do that i don't i don't know if this movie will age that well that uh, by that i mean i don't know if many people will still be talking about it but, you know. It seems like nobody's talking about it right now, so... That's that's what I'm saying, yeah. All Which right. is sad. Number 10. In my list, Mission Fucking Impossible. Oh, close to mine, close to mine. I didn't know, I... You know what I did? I put Ready Player One into the mediocre. So I don't have to remove Mission Impossible because it was in the bottom of my list. Because I gave it like 7 out of 10, Ready Player One, and I thought like, you know what, it doesn't deserve to be in that list if I have to remove Mission Impossible. And I have to say a lot towards Tom Cruise. And for in his age, pretty impressive what he's doing. And he's actually planning to do two more back to back. So there's I can't a wait. Oh God, can I not wait? So there's something to be excited about him. Seven and eight. Jesus. Yeah, like, this is his career of basically going to his 60s, of making, like, two Look, more movies. Look, Eyes Wide Shut was great, but this is what he's... This is this is Tom Cruise. This is what he's aiming for. I'm wondering what kind of stunts he's going to do in the, those two movies. Like, what is the next barrier? Because they what, already... What stunts is he going to do when he's 80? Get out of bed without assistance? No, it's gonna be a chase scene of him having like a cane going after another person. Tom Cruise uh, wipes his ass without uh, assistance. Well, maybe in they're theaters. gonna use some like de aging technology in Hollywood where he's gonna look like in his 40s, but in reality, he moves like an 80 year old guy. So that's gonna be Mission Impossible 20. 25. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's my number nine. So, I guess we liked it. I will say, though, at the time that I saw it, it was something of a, of a religious experience. Because I am... You have too much... You, have, you just love too much of him. I just, I just love Mission Impossible. It's my favorite franchise. It's my favorite action franchise by far. It's... The the, it makes me feel like I'm a fucking kid, and I don't know. The first time, sure, on rewatch, the plot is ridiculous and it's predictable, and it doesn't. But but that but that first time I will forever like, have in my brain. Sure. It was, it was exhilarating. I gave it. I almost gave it a ten, but you know, right now it's at, at an eight. Well, it's a difference between a theory experience and an actual home experience yeah. because there's like a... I saw it in IMAX. So yeah, that would... The number one thing, like the thing that I don't like about the movie is like the boring plots of actual conversation. They actually mm. 
are not doing well with that. But whenever action happens, that's when the my favorite part is when they had the helicopter chasing. Sure, that's one of the best. And they explained it. The most best part was that when they explained it, that they actually couldn't film it in any country because it's illegal to do something like that stunt, <laughs> and no, it's dangerous. Don't. Yeah, you don't say. And so they did uh, that in a special different countries just to make that to happen. And that kind of, as an audience, I'm very appreciative to see that to Same. happen. Same, I love that. So. Yeah, Mission Impossible in my tenth place. What if we're talking you? best scenes, I would say the 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 jump. Jump between when the he jump, broke his the leg. The jump out of the plane. Oh yeah, the yeah, yeah, in Paris, I remember. Fuck me, that was just the music too. Oh my god, and the music. I don't the think se- they had the a series. Music. It did. It didn't have it. I thought it was quiet when they were uh, falling down. No, it was loud. It was like. Anyway, okay. Your number ten then. My number ten. Uh, faces, places, and I know it's not technically a twenty eighteen movie, but it's it was released. It's a documentary. I'll I'll say about the twenty eighteen thing. It was released in twenty seventeen and a bunch of th- uh, festivals towards the end of that year, but mostly for most people, in wide release especially, it was a twenty eighteen movie, mm-hmm. and it was a documentary about. Uh, or made by and about herself uh, by Agnès Varda, who's a French filmmaker. She made movies in the '60s, and okay. she's close to 90 years old now, and and uh, still kicking and still, you know, showing signs of life, I guess. And very uh, <laughs> her, no, I'm her not, signs of life I, I'm is joking. kind of like depleting. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> joking, of course. But she, but she's a very lively and funny person, and she she meets this um, uh, photographer who's like 35 maybe, maybe 30, and not, 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 enough, <laughs> not what you're thinking, you know, <laughs> don't even think about that, but, or maybe off screen, who knows, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, she, and they go on a little adventure uh, in France, and um, okay. it's one of the most hard to explain, but at the same time, life affirming movies I think I've ever seen. It's just, it's such a feel-good kind of movie. They they go uh, around little small towns in France and they photograph people and then they, they uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, how, what is this term called? Uh, I'm going to ask a question, even yes. though I don't care about the answer. What did this movie appeal to you? Two people just going together? Well, I was just getting to it. I was just getting to it. Basically, they, they, they go around France and they, like, paint, well, they don't paint, but they, they, like, project people onto the sides of buildings, their photos. And it's just um, people that live there or people that, ha- that have lived there in the past or, like, animals. And it's amazing. Uh, it's so uplifting and the power of art, which sounds awful, but it's an amazing movie. Okay. And I'll send it to you. It's great. Technically not this year, but I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. So, are you satisfied? Did you yeah. say enough about this movie? Yeah. Are you doubting this movie? Well, I don't know. It's just... Oh well, I have to see the movie first, because I'm not that very intrigued. Two people are going through the towns of France and just putting in photographs. Yes. All right, what was your number nine? My number nine is Mandy. Ooh, spicy. I, I don't know. Kind of like shame to say it. It came to number nine. Disgusting. Just kidding. But, hey, Nick Cage beating up this creature in a living room. I mean, come on. It should post that be a 10 out of 10 movie. That was, that was the moment that I fell in love with this movie. It takes its time. The movie takes an hour sure does. to establish the characters and just to set out. And I don't know, it's how this weird animation that was kind of like punk rock 1980s style. But overall, fucking Nick Cage is in the movie. So it's no matter what movie you're watching, 
you will never have me having a movie that is gonna have one out of ten with Nick Cage. If Nick Cage is there, he still he gets a point. So sure he does. That's why you rated Vampire's Kiss two out of ten. Exactly. Because come on, the guy, the guy is a fucking legend. I always gonna say that I have two favorite uh, actors: Nick Cage and Dimitri Nagiev. That's <laughs> what? <laughs> that was the most random thing of all time. You don't know about Dimitri Nagiev? Like his acting ability is almost like uh, Nick Cage, but the opposite. He made a movie uh, not too long ago. I mean, this guy is making movies all the time, but. This guy is fucking awesome. I mean, have you seen Fizruk? <laughs> Jesus. All right. I might as well talk about Mandy now. Okay. Cause... Which list, is, by the way, is it? Or do you want to keep it later? No, I might as well talk about it Okay, now. fine. Talk about My it. number one of the year. What? Yeah. Number one? Number one. Oh, my God. The only movie I gave a 10 out of 10 this year. Oh, fuck's sake. It's, 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 I love it. I will fight you. Why? And, what and was it? the movie take? Okay, I love the movie, but it takes too long. No, and it doesn't. Fucking two hours. It could be actual half an hour. They have these no, the, shots. The, the, the journey is the is the point. It, is the, the journey takes the a little journey bit too is long. the is the pleasurable part. You know, it's it's all it's all important. Yeah, but don't you Both feel have. like some of the shots were way too long that they actually kept? And no, they could I was actually every second of it. And they could actually cut some of that so actually to get to the action. Where he they actually cu- they cut some of it, but then the movie would be lesser for it. I think. Listen, I don't know. I it's sure it's it's like a completely personal um enjoyment. I love Nick Cage, obviously, yes, he's my favorite actor. Without without any uh, it, undisputedly, my favorite actor, and um, sh- so I, so I, so I'm engaged with him on a meta level. You know? Okay. Any movie that he's in, I'm kind of more engaged in Into automatically. It. I guess but that's like the Nick Cage syndrome. Just the fucking boldness of this movie is is so intoxicating, and I was just sitting there with my fucking mouth open, and uh, I couldn't. I couldn't believe it was happening. It was the the it was so clear that this guy's vision of the director mm-hmm. is being like so accurately represented on screen that he he's so and this is this is just his life and what he does and I just it changed the fucking way I view art and it was on top of that it was it was a movie that is simultaneously extremely pretentious like really so with the colors and with the fucking especially much of the first half because it's so slow and meandering and so like hypnotic and meditative okay. and uh, like psychedelic and but but within this movie you also have parts of it that are as exploitation as you can imagine a fucking guy with a with a blade for a dick snorting cocaine watching porn and then nick cage goes and fucking snaps his neck is inc- yeah that was strange how could he snap a demon neck and i don't care and <laughs> uh, and having that in the same movie and be so blended together this extremely pretentious uh, and, and in a good way and i like the word pretentious too i like pretentious movies i like most of what people describe as pretentious i generally tend to enjoy and having this extreme violence and fun aspect blended with this, it just appealed to me. On a, yeah, and, and to to top it off, the song uh, the movie kicks off with the song "Starless" by King Crimson, which is happens to be my favorite song probably ever. Well, you know, it's it's hard to name a favorite song, but you okay. know. It happens to be one of mine. Just tell me the truth. You really liked the movie because there was another movie inside the movie that was a B called, movie. Called Night Beast. <laughs> Night Beast. That's why you're giving like support. And <laughs> see that you 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 laugh, but that too because I can uh, because I would watch a movie like Night Beast too. Because so I identify with the because guy. you're a fucking idiot and a monster. What no. are you doing to yourself if you're gonna watch that movie, Night Beast? 
it's it's a great experience and i feel like i connect with this movie and um well it's, it's a great fantastic. that's your number one no. movie what was your number uh, nine movie of the year my number nine was mission impossible all right let's kick off with number eight and i don't have much to say about the movie it's called isle of dogs so mm -hmm. Well, the only thing I'm gonna talk about the movie is that I'm mostly shocked with the animation and some of the depiction of Japan. It's I fucking love it. Other than that, I don't remember much of the story, and I think it's it, it, even though the movie was short in line time length, it felt very long. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's I don't remember, but yeah, I can sense that. Uh, I can agree with that. That's pretty much what i gotta say about the movie all right nobody right. is for you uh hereditary hmm. all right yeah great great year for horror great year both bad and good <laughs> well both bad and good yes in my worst list i think uh eight out of ten movies can be considered horror and uh yeah, but you know, number eight in my top best list is Hereditary. And um, you can kick yeah. off with number seven because mine is Annihilation, and we already talked about it. So, mm -hmm. do I have anything to say about Hereditary? What do you thought about the movie itself? Like, did you like the twist in the end? No, not really. That's what bothers you? Yeah. I, w I would say the last half hour of it is probably my weakest aspect for me. Uh, the, the movie's weakest aspect. Because there was... And, and, and I watched it in the theater. And unfortunately, the theater experience was one of the worst in my life. Because the people were... <laughs> well, well, no. Halloween was the worst in my life. That was just the worst. And that's... Nobody, is wa nobody was watching the movie? What? No, there were three girls who were just yelling in the theater. They were... Yelling, oh, literally yelling. Oh, it was the worst. I wanted to kill myself. Or kill them first and then kill myself. But anyway, Hereditary... Fantastic also, thing. it had something of a... Had an extremely unpleasant audience who was yelling all the time and laughing at parts that were not supposed to be funny. But in, but you know, in, in a kind of a strange way, I kind of see their point. I hope they didn't laugh when the girl got her no no her it was towards the end more more so because that would when be the, weird when tony collette was banging her head up on the, okay on the, you're like what the fuck was that <laughs> that that's kind of there are, there are goofy moments in this movie but other than that it's it's pretty great it's really chilling and and that whole sequence that is practically silent or with no dialogue when the girl uh gets her head handicapped handicapped yeah Okay. from that point and even before that the whole scene at the party just the silent storytelling at the whatever it's called you know continue decapitated for wow we suck anyway we suck in the, any language at all great movie i like the part uh just uh, when she got decapitated because it felt very because the guy his brother her brother he, like the his reaction when that happened it's probably like what i would have and i don't know how Same. would i would react if I, I felt that was the best way you could do it and the movie goes in a very weird uh places uh because it, it like the director said he meant to uh, shock the audience in the end because it just has a completely different ending what you would expect and no how is it how is it different well he said the uh, last uh, minutes of the movie where he was hailed as the king who was supposed to take over the world sure but generally speaking it's you can sense that there's a satanic cult sat satanic cult uh, in that large of the scale, I don't know. It felt it for me. It felt like a haunted house movie. Uh, mm. 
in the beginning. That's what I was getting at it. But anyway, I like well, the movie. Good movie. Where where is it on your list? Uh, it's in the. I think it's in my fifth. Uh, so we had uh, seven. Mm-hmm. You said which one was your seven? Cold War. All right, let's go for there because my uh, seventh movie was uh, A Star Is Born. So Cold we're ready. War is actually I want to say the most recent one that I watched. Um, absolutely fantastic. I mean, what the fuck was it? What was your uh, if you have to say which one to uh, choose, either or Cold War, which one would you prefer? Either, because I watched it first. I understand you watched it first, but the question is, how did you? Well, I didn't just say it, but you know, I genuinely feel like his style of filmmaking is, came to me as such a surprise. Um, I. Um, his style of filmmaking is so like formalist and naturalistic mm-hmm. and it feels familiar it feels like many of the directors that you you're familiar with like Bergman maybe maybe I, I don't know who else Hanukkah but black and white you know okay. and and the style is so is so it makes so much sense and it takes you back to that period but you know my question is would he change his style from black and white if he does another movie, or is that like his style is gonna keep going and doing it? I think if he chooses another period, then he's gonna change his style, mm-hmm. because the style is is meant to emulate the all the techniques and the equipment that they used on these movies, which is basically a camera and a tripod, really, mm-hmm. were were they existed already and were used pretty much in the same ways in the sixties in the period that he's portraying. So it just, it helps the immersion and I like, but, but there's something unique to his style and every shot is like a photograph and Cold War, in, in some ways it was a more emotion, emotionally engaging movie uh-huh. for me, but I, I just felt that Ida was more unique and it had more of a punch. I think you know, Ida is more emotionally impactful movie because the mm. subject of the movie um, sort of kind of I can see that yeah hits you because of the uh, because of the revealing in about the character yeah who actually was responsible of her parents of death and I felt felt like that was a unique twist and I still like to remember about it because it kind of gives the a lot of empathy to the farmer who is leading uh Ida to the forest and pretty much because because it's kind of like giving a nice idea like this guy did a terrible thing during the war however for some reason he saved her because she would not be recognized as a Jew and for me that's sort of like Asking a lot of questions that just give Tim a lot of thoughts about the whole story at all. And my, uh, your seven was Cold War, my, the Cold War was in fifth position. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to put it higher too, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean. well, it doesn't, well, for me, Cold War was not as good because I didn't uh, have too much thought about the movie, given the Stella. For me, Cold War was missing a little bit of um, perhaps character development, uh, you would call it. Uh, towards the beginning, they kind of fall in love. Well, I mean, initially, it's more of like a hookup, mm-hmm. right? But uh, then they kind of fall in love. But I was just missing that extra bit of uh, like just how. Just how they fell in love and how... Because the, in the movie, they're like, they love each other more than... More than, Their more love than, story is a little Lisa bit complicated loves, because more than Lisa loves Johnny in the room, or the other <laughs> way around. More than it's, Johnny. It, their love story is a little bit complicated because once they are together, they not really are sucking into each other. And for me, it's for me what I took from Cold War, and this is probably a little bit of a criticism to the movie, is that it was not as engaging as Ida, and for reason is that the characters. 
their relationship was not uh, fleshed out. Not not necessarily fleshed out, but not understood because they're yes. they're they're for some reason there are when they had the chance of being together, for some reason they're pushing away from each other. There was a scene of when they were in a party, and that okay. kind of like well, in prayers. Yeah, it does come out of nowhere a little bit, but I think it's it has to do with the fact that they feel that they are out of place in uh, outside of Poland and their home home um, country and you know I'm sure you've lived in many countries I don't know what you would consider your home but you know mm -hmm. I I've lived in England for the past couple of years and I kind of feel like that too like you don't associate with yourself yeah I think the problem so in, in, that in my interpretation mm -hmm. what I got from the movie is that that they they need that that sort of attention yes of actually being in a secret love because it's sort of like not forbidden but because they're trying to escape mm. and they okay. have that long uh distance relationship that's sort of what intrigues them but when they actually are together they, yeah yeah you know you grow up in this in this environment in, in which many things are forbidden and now that you're given total freedom you don't know what to do and yeah you many you know you experience existential crisis and that's pretty much uh, what i liked about the movie i just like the feel of the movie and it's kind of was familiar i don't know because i'm from eastern here if you know, but some of the humor sort of like was connected was kind of like yeah funny. yeah so maybe that's because of why but who knows it, uh, it, it felt like genuine in that sense it felt like it was sort of like bratwa. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move on let's number six what do you have uh i have shoplifters that's low Low. Well, I have many good movies out there. All right. Shoplifters. Was, Let's was... keep it that because uh, I will continue in number four. So we we'll talk at that point. Uh, you want to continue at your number four? Let. Okay. What do you have number five? Uh, burning. What? Burning. 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 You what don't know that? about burning. Is that the Korean movie? Yes. I haven't seen it. Oh, should I talk about it? I'm going to talk about it, sure. Or do you want to talk about shoplifters? Uh, number five, I don't have much to say because we already talked about it. It was Cold War. Mm -hmm. So number five for you is uh, Burning. Burning, indeed. Uh, what do you want to say about the movie? What do you have to say about it? Oh, boy. Uh... Burning, it's also one that I watched fairly recently. You said that you uh, liked the movie because of the atmosphere of it. Yeah, the atmosphere. What was the just, story about? What was the movie about? The story is, honestly, and it took me so long to watch this, just because it's a Korean movie that's uh, two and a half... Koreans. Two, <laughs> exactly, no. <laughs> Don't you ever insult my, my bros. In Korea, shout out to Gangnam Style. And um, it took me so long to watch this because just to, just the fact that it's two and a half hours long and it's gonna be a slow burn kind of thriller, and to even slow down myself to that kind of pace, and I'm so glad that I waited long enough to watch it to, to watch it in proper in a proper mindset because this is a fucking tr trip of a movie that is trip in the sense that it takes you on a journey and right. it's so suspenseful and the only kind of criticism that i would give to it is that you do have to give some back it's like you have to meet this movie in the middle in the sense that it's engaging if you put a little bit of effort into it mm -hmm. but other than the, if you engage yourself in the story it's it gives so much back it's such an expertly crafted thriller and the story is fairly simple. The guy, the guy is um, is a simple guy. He works as a construction worker, I believe, and he meets a girl that he grew up with in a in a village uh -huh. uh, where he where they both grew up, and uh, they kind of hook up. And then she goes, you know, they kind of have, a, or he has a thing for her now, and then she goes to travel to Africa, and then um, when she goes back she brings this this guy who is this rich um 
rich, mysterious dude, and they call him the Gatsby or something. It very reminds me of Crazy Asians. <laughs> no. Is that the same for me? Absolutely not even close. <laughs> anyway, and he when they when they get together and start drinking, he he tells them a secret hobby that he does, mm -hmm. and from there on, paranoia ensues. And in some ways, this movie is kind of like The Shining. In the in its structure, where it's like nothing much happens at the beginning, right? But then slowly, uh, it it boils up to. Well, and it's trying to give you an atmosphere, and it, it is atmospheric too. And it's sort of like giving away a little bit creepy music because the and music Brian, of the soundtrack of the music sort of give out that. I don't know how can you make a horror movie in the mountains that makes you paranoid, but it feels like isolation. That oh, why wouldn't you be able to? What and not be make horror make a horror movie in the mountains and make it paranoid, feel paranoid. Like I don't know, I don't know anything but The Shining that actually made it, and it's kind of actually well, unique I in can that think sense. of a few, but you know, um, Burning was also great in the sense that it is an investigation movie and um, it gives you enough details. It, it, it shows you the details in the same way that the character experiences the details right. of, the, of the plot. And it's up to you to judge his decision, mm -hmm. in, if that makes sense. Not it's super vague, I know, but um, there's a decision and he, you know, it's up to you to judge it. And you can disagree with it, and, but also see his point of view. And in that sense, it was such an engaging movie. Hmm. All right. I don't know. It's 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 one of those. I don't don't miss it. All right, that was number five. Mm -hmm. Number four. I can go uh, first because that was number six of yours, and my number four is shoplifting. Go ahead. Uh, interesting movie. I have some questions towards some of the actions they did, which I thought mm -hmm. was very weird for some reason. All right. Because uh, there was a moment where the kid uh, got himself caught on purposely. And I didn't understand why he did it. But overall, it's kind of an interesting of a family for some reason. I don't know why, but it reminds me of Boogie Nights. Sort of really? like... Sort of like a dysfunctional family that are together, and oh, except poor, not rich. Ex if you take away the porn and you have people who are just shoplifting, and the money, well, the money exists in both ways. But for me, it remind me of that uh, sort of like a family who have nothing are related to each other, but they are together mm. because they need each other. True that. True that. And but of course we don't know that that they are related. Not related. Well, they're not related. But we don't know that. How do you know that? Did they told you that they were related in some ways? I don't know. I may have watched the movie. Well, in the movie, they made very clear that in some ways, some of them are not related. Sure. And for me, it's just like an interesting uh, story of Sure. Over yeah. this, just basically of a family that uh, tries to keep together. I yeah, I much of the same for me, and I I, I like the how deceptively genius this movie is because nothing about this movie screams like flashiness or like flashy filmmaking. Everything down to the acting, the cinematography, and especially the story is so simple on the outside, but complicated when you really think about it the story is is seemingly about a simple family who's like you know it's wholesome they they keep together and they they don't have much but they have each other and like you said and um but at some point you start realizing that this is a damn complicated family unit and it and it says a whole lot about society it's kind of like revealing that in the end that some actually were assholes they were but it's, like I said, it's complicated. Sure. What was your number four? 
the favorite. Okay, interesting. Where, where is it on your list? <laughs> Number fucking one is my favorite movie of the year. Oh, well. kind of catchy, right? <laughs> ah, <laughs> fuck out of here. Give me your microphone. <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> so yeah, what do you have to say about the movie favorite? Um, why don't you go first? Uh, okay, since it's my favorite movie of the year, I know it's catchy. Uh, I like this movie a lot because I like the director. And it's strange, like he made the period piece uh, that is very engaging. I really like the characters that he represented. And the woman who was playing the queen... Uh, it seems like very complicated of uh, a role to take into, and everything about the everything about the movie about the style and it seems like it doesn't has a really a purpose or a story, but it does in some ways. And Emma Stone, like her character of this, I didn't saw it coming of her trying to get in and actually take over the queen uh, trust, and basically be next to her. I didn't see it, but when that happened, I kind of liked this story even more because they give it a little bit of twist. Because you start asking, like, okay, who am I rooting for? Who is the character that I like? Because, first of all, you are kind of with Emma Stone. But when she does that, you kind of actually question her. And this movie is, uh, sort of makes you ask questions, which... Usually in a movie, when you start asking questions, it's not a good sign. But this movie is actually, it's a good thing. And I had a blast experience uh, of watching it. And especially enjoying like some sort of like the period piece of that time. Because they did show some of the revealing of how the politics works. Yes. And usually politics are not that very engaging in movies. But somehow they did in this movie very interesting. Yeah. So I'm very praised for the director. And I'm glad that he was nominated for Best Director that year because clearly from all the nominees, he, for some reason, Spike Lee was there too, but he actually deserved uh, to be nominated. He was supposed to be, uh, I think he should be recognized for Second Day or uh, Killing of the Second uh, Sacred mm -hmm, Day. Mm -hmm. Was he not? He was not. Mm -hmm. I think so. I don't well, think. Well, I'd have to look at who directed what in that year. Um, in terms of what you said, this movie also proved to me that you can absolutely make a manipulative movie that is also amazing. And like this movie is is what you would call manipulative, right? And usually you'd say, "Oh, it's movie manipulative." It's you know, it plays with your, uh, it gives you information, but then it, you know, uh, it doesn't let you make up your mind on its on your own. But this one, you clearly start with Emma Stone as the as the good girl yeah the good and character. Rachel Wise is like a tough one you dislike her kind of but then by the end kind of twist that and um but it still was amazing in that sense and um I you said that you like the director you like the movie because you like the director right yeah of course I don't really like the director but I like you don't like his style or you don't like I don't him like his style movie. this movie is the least the least like his other movies Mm -hmm. Would you say that? Uh, I don't know if I would say at least it's kind of like the same level for me because in mm. the Killing of Second Deer and then you have Lobster, they're all kind of in the same level. But it's different because though. they all ranked. Uh, I all gave them an eight, and this same. Movie but in terms this. of like the okay, sure you can give them an eight, but like in terms of the qual uh, the style itself, this movie has has much less of that kind of dialogue. You know what I mean? His like deadpan comedic or tries to be comedic uh, kind of dialogue. But I don't think he was going for it. I don't think he was going for deadpan. Whatever, comedic. whatever. He it. I think he still had the, his style, but it was not so much as it was focused on the previous movies. Yes, and I think it was. It was less pre prevalent in this movie, and it was the movie was better for it, in my opinion. So I kind of never been a big fan of his but now this is this is definitely my favorite one of his mm -hmm. and now i feel like i like i i'm hyped 
Well, what I'm do you mean you're not a big a fan of his? Like, did you not like his previous movies? I or? liked The Lobster. I was kind of okay with uh, Sacred Deer. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like Dogtooth at all. Okay. So, and he has one other movie called Alps, I think. I think which I well, I still need to watch Dogtooth to make a just a complete mm-hmm. view of his. But so far, I see he as a talented director. And with this movie, you Well, now I'm hyped, too. You know, now I'm hyped, but well, I would I be hyped if I saw and the I... lobster. Since lobster, I knew that this guy sure. has uh, talent. But after Sacred Deer, I was like, uh, I don't know, maybe he made one good movie. What do you mean? You liked the movie when we walked out. You okay. said it was not a sure, but I liked it. I like it less now. I wouldn't watch it again. Well, if you didn't want, okay, but okay, well, it came out in 2017, right? Yeah. All right, so what came out? Okay, Oscars. Uh, it was not in my list for 2017. What was it? Okay, so was it like in the mediocre part? Or like the Maybe honorable, honorable mentions? mentions? Honorable mentions, yeah. Well, fucking Jim Kimmel. Yeah, it probably never had it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that was uh, number four. Number three. For me. Climax. Climax? Climax. What the fuck is Climax? You don't, you don't remember? Yeah. Gaspar Noé. Dancing Academy. French movie. Oh, Trip. yeah, no. Yeah, I remember. As I heard true? this movie was a family-friendly movie. Is that true? Bring your grandma <laughs> to climax. Your grandma will climax too. How so will your kids and your wife. Is it a good date movie? By the way? Absolutely. Did you recommend? There's so much ass eating. Listen, oh yeah, talk about listen, the ass eating. No, 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 no. Girl, start talking about the ass eating. If you're a girl and you're trying to get your ass ate, this is the movie for you and your date. Because oh yeah, the ass eating in this movie. Oh my god. Is there literally a ass eating? Like no, but they talk about it a lot. They, they. There's a whole scene where two guys are like, they're a little under the influence. They're like. Oh man, they go into it. They they talk about like, ooh, how how you. And one one guy is not too into it, but the other guy is trying to persuade him like, nah, like, nah you gotta eat the ass, bro. You gotta eat it. It's so good. And Jesus then, um, yeah, that's the kind of movie. And I don't know. It's I don't remember ever feeling sick during a movie, but I, other than climax. But in climax, at certain points, it was so fucking sickening that I was just nauseous and it was god it was so fucking gut punching and effective huh. amazing movie jesus christ man and the the whole thing takes place um in uh well the whole soundtrack is like 90s electronic music so it's just constant head bashing fucking i just really it like turns into punk it. Rock music like Nirvana and they'd be no, like, no, 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 it's not like that. No. It's like electronic one. Yeah, electronic Apex Twin. Um, I think Daft Punk. Other stuff. Would that it, would Def Grip actually make sense into that movie? No, I don't think so. It seems like that movie actually has like that vibe of like oh, <laughs> like something no, loud, no. <laughs> like something like. No, it's more psychedelic. Uh, electronic music that is more like entrancing rather than right. Death Grips is just is just spaz out listening to it. Alright. Well, I can tell about my number three movie. Please watch Climax. Please don't keep it that way that you haven't seen it. I have a bunch of movies to watch. I will watch Make in it. April when I have the time. Make it the top of your list. Or when I go to Estonia because apparently in Estonia you have a lot of time. And you can do whatever you want. But my number three movie of the year is The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Number three? Number three. I... All right. I missed it. 
really enjoyed this movie. It was a not the best Cohen movies ever. Kind of middle of the road Cohen's. Sure, like the mediocre part, but I enjoyed this as a movie about. Uh, it depends on the parts of the movie because it's basically a sh a movie that joined with short movies. Yes. And there's parts that I love, and there's parts I was like, okay, fine. But yeah, there were some interesting aspects uh, from the movie, and a lot of people are pointing out that the million days of uh, way to die in the West mm -hmm. should have been like this movie because this movie was <laughs> just basically a pr like a parody of the Western. Except was not made. Except this was not made by talentless idiots. Yeah. This. This is made by real people, by the way, who has who have a soul, <laughs> who has a soul and a brain to work with. So overall, my uh, take on this movie is that, and it's a spoiler, that every time in the end of the story something happens incredibly bad for the character, and that's give you a sort of like a perception for the entire movie that something is gonna happen in the end however what I think is the, my favorite part was the Neil Neeson part where he had the uh, the handicapped uh, uh, kid from the Harry Potter and the whole short movie is completely silent but it's such a good uh, communication of the way their relationship is working because they don't mm -hmm. talk to each other. And then you ask yourself, so you basically have the whole story creating it. What are you looking for? Can I open? Open. There's a handle behind you. Right behind you, there's a handle. <coughs> Just. <laughs> so this guy is basically a handicapped. He has no arms, no legs. But Neil, so but he has a talent, and that talent is telling a story. Mm -hmm. So each uh, town that he's going uh, to is basically doing the show of telling a story. However, their uh, interaction with him and Neil Neeson is that uh, for him is a burden. Neil Neeson to take care of him because he had to take uh, make sure that he take a piss, eat, and he has to actually. But they then never talk to each other. Oh, okay. So and this whole of, thing is silent. Kind of and, wholesome. Yeah, that's... and it's very, very, very good. Uh, sort of like you are creating a story within your own head while you're watching it. Mm, interesting. And that's one of the best aspects of one of the short stories. Then there's a other one that is uh, about the whole huge migration of people going from the city to, uh, to the California, to the Wild West. Okay. And... There's a, okay, so basically, there's a countless, countless of stories of uh, basically people are different uh, stories that Cohen's are have created, and you're just watching the journey of different people. That's whole the movie about, and the first one is the most campiest one and the geekiest one because mm. you basically have a cowboy who's actually inhuman. <laughs> Because he has such a good skill that he can actually kill anyone. Like... Like shooting? Well, here's the thing. He shot the whole fucking bar without even... Like, with basically being blind. And... Or he killed a person by stamping on a wood that propelled a person to shoot himself multiple times it's, nah. it's just basically a whole it's comedic and that's why like slapstick yeah show it off and that's why it's many people are saying that it's what uh, the millions uh, ways of die in a way should have been about and by the way good twist Neil Nielsen are actually both in movies or those two movies so oh shit extended universe Extended universe. So that's my number three. I actually like it. Not the best well, movie in the world, but it's very engaging in sense of like. I might have to watch it. Although I have some older coins movies that I need to see first. Not the very best. As you said, it's kind of like in the middle, but it's just like as a movie, it's an interesting take of it. So that's my take of it. All right, motherfucking number two.
you have my number two. Oh, now this one you 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 regret that you haven't seen Suspiria. I probably am glad that I haven't seen it because I heard it's very mind fucking and I, is that a bad thing? I try to avoid something that I don't understand. Like if there's a horror movie, I try to. Most... It has Suspiria has some of the most horrifying scenes I think I've ever seen. Or in recent memory, anyway. God, it's it's so fantastic. It's I I had a <laughs> wide open gaping mouth and a, a wide open gaping smile when I was watching it, but I was also pretty pretty scared. Uh, and and the whole movie, sure, it's those scenes are not the whole movie. The whole movie is two and a half hours long. It's really long. It feels that length, truly, and um, but something about it is uh, so rewarding and right. that kind of 70s style, which is replicated perfectly in this movie, that kind of 70s gothic uh, horror style is um, one of the selling points for sure. Is it because of the images? What was the images, camera styles, uh, certain uh, zooming uh, shots, certain um, just how entrancing it is. The dances, the dancing scenes. Fuck me, man. It's it's oh, scary, tr entrancing, uh, uh, hypnotic, and. And a lot of that has to do with the soundtrack too. The soundtrack is amazing. One of the scenes is pro possibly the most amazing movie moment moment of 2018 entirely happened in this movie, and um, it was during one of the one of the big scenes, right? One of the big horrifying kind of scenes uh, towards the end, and the the ch the song that they play is. Ah, oh, I can't even describe it. It's one of those movie moments where. You no one sees it coming in the audience. Like you wouldn't think to put something like this. Like normally, when you soundtrack a horror horror scene, you go for something like horrifying or screeching or some like blah kind of soundtrack or violins. But no, they put a fucking Tom York song with the fucking piano, and it's so blissful. The song is blissful. The scene is horrifying, and together. It creates this okay, magical <laughs> experience, and it makes sense because to them it is blissful what is happening, and that's it's a total unexpected move, but it but it makes. By the way, is Dakota Johnson is a good actress in this movie? Yeah, she is. Okay. Is Luca a great director? Hell yeah! Apparently, uh, what other movies sure, did he direct? Sure, it's not. Uh, Call me by your name. Okay. And I am love. That's kind of like a Call different movie. Name. <laughs> Call me by your name is is better, but you know, um, not not many movies are better than that. All right. Uh, second movie, my favorite, is fucking Roma. Oh wow! So, you're, so uh, you're you're more towards the the general consensus. Sure, because I know it's, it's it's the way that I connect with the movie. And I sort of felt that I was in that part of the time mm -hmm. that it was taking place. And I had no problem of connecting with it. So, uh, Roma, I have not, not too much to say about it. It's, uh, it's just like uh, the experience is what yeah. the most in part of the movie that is is about and that's what I got from it so the experience was amazing and I can appreciate it uh, I would agree, disagree with one person who said like who said he watched the movie and he's mind bloated after three months after see <sighs> sorry Ooh. after watching the movie after three months he is amazed by it mm. and is mind bloated I was not mind bloated but uh, the sense of feeling of that movie was 
pure p- pleasure, and I appreciate everything about that movie. I can see that. I mean, I mean, it was amazing to see a guy with a fucking steak <laughs> naked in a fucking hotel. Why is that there? I don't know, but <laughs> sure, it feels like it belongs there. But for all the uh, for all the gays and faggots, they all enjoy the scene. So all all hell for them. So that's my second favorite movie. The first one I will go quickly because I already talked about it. it's favorite, as we already talked about it. It's the favorite. It's the favorite. And your number one is movie is. Nick Cage. Mandy. The Nun. And you, uh, do you want to go over with your mediocre movies? Because the rest of the movies? I'll just name them. And if I have something to say, I'll say. If I gotta say something, you know I ain't gonna hold back. Oh my god, so much good shit in here. To talk about. I hope you did not have like a hundred lists in there. <laughs> no, there's like ten. Okay. <laughs> Which is still a lot. Um, oh yeah, and my number one is Mandy. Of well, course. Mother, of course. Mandy. Mandy, 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 Mandy. I love it. I love it. I knew instantly too that I was gonna... Nothing was gonna top it. Nothing, nothing. 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 Okay. Nothing so there's this either. movie called uh, How to Talk to Girls at Parties. Which is towards the... Did you have a problem, buddy? <laughs> which is a doctor. Do you have... <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you have a problem actually socializing with girls? Of course, I do. I'm a fucking wreck. This movie was... Um, played at Cannes. And it got shitty reviews. But the trailer looked so fucking whack, wacky and interesting. That I uh, had to... Check investigate it, out. it. Yeah. yeah and it, it looked weird enough to like enjoy regardless of how good it is so um boy were they right the people who reviewed it it's the weirdest shit it's it's about the 70s for kind of punk scene in the uk so you'd think that you know they they fucking talk about all the bands that i like but no uh, some some kind of fucking I didn't even finish it. It was uh, Elle Fanning playing an alien, and there's... Oh, what's her face? Uh, the wife of Tom Cruise. Um, Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman played an alien too, and they like come to Earth. And the way they portray aliens is just... or I don't know. They come from a different planet, but they're just like people dressed in latex and okay. funny colors. And they like dye their hair. And she's like... Um, he's like explaining to her that they dress as a punk and he, mm-hmm. and she's like oh i want to i, I want a punk too or something like that oh. it was i don't know it's kind of silly but i i fucking it was dumb and i i didn't enjoy it okay next uh ghost stories a movie that i saw blindly at odeon uh, to- uh, thought it was total trash at, at first, but um, actually kind of redeemed itself for me. Redeemed itself for me because th- there are much worse movies out there. Initially, I gave it a two. Now I think it's about a four. Um, it's a horror movie. Okay. My next one is also a horror movie. Halloween. Wait, was it Ghost Stories? Is that one of the uh, Odin experience that you didn't know what you were paying for? That is exactly it. And then they had a scene of a fucking grandpa that had a fucking mask that took them off. Martin Freeman, yeah. That's kind of a spoiler, but no one cares about this movie anyway. Did you got it uh, was shocked? Such, <laughs> it was such a trash fest, movie, honestly. <laughs> but I can't, I can't dog it too much. Okay, fine. Because there's worse shit out there. Uh, Halloween, and I'm going from worst to less bad to... No, from to... more bad to less bad. Okay. In my mediocre list. Um... Halloween. Apparently, some people like it, but I heard some of the gore was really like in, what? That was very actually effective, like Jeez, like holy shit! Like, I can't, I I can't authorize that. Okay, fine. 
I, I cannot. I, I will not. Statement. Oh, Deadpool 2. The more, the quicker I forget about this movie, the better. What happened? What's, what's wrong with the Deadpool 2? It's shite. <laughs> it's unfunny. It's, it's annoying. And fuck you, everyone who liked Deadpool, for making the sequel a possibility. Alright. Um, Solo? I think you mentioned it. Yeah, worst movie in my life. It was didn't like it at all. Yeah. Skyscraper. Guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Even though I like to say guilty pleasures don't exist. You, you like know, to say that? I Bullshit. Do like to, I do like to say that. I'm I'm not guilty for enjoying anything. I don't feel guilty. Yeah. Even 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 skyscraper. I don't like. I don't feel guilty for enjoying that. I but, you find know, it is, it I is, find a little bit trash. guilty of it actually. It is trash, but okay. I do enjoy it. <laughs> I find guilty of enjoying uh, what was the name? Uh, Collateral Beauty. Oh, why would you feel guilty? It's an amazing movie. That's why I feel <laughs> because the movie is. Oh come on! It's so uh, it treats its audience fucking like, like an idiot, but I like it because. How stupid it was. Alright, continue, motherfucker. Hellfest. Nothing to say about that. Good. Continue. Venom. Nothing to say about that. Bohemian Rhapsody. Lots to say about that, but I won't. All I'll say is just... There are some Why The Starborn was better than Bohemian Rhapsody? Oh boy. Uh, more naturalistic. Uh, more... Um, a more coherent By the way, story. You said you actually enjoyed it. You gave it like a six out of ten. Well, I, well, I was about to say that Bohemian Rhapsody has lots of bad parts, but but also parts that are redeeming and kind of amazing. But I, I, say what you will about the the ending yeah. concert scene. I thought it was totally spectacular and mm -hmm. for what it is, not 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 that it's the achievement of cinema whatever but you know I, I overall it's like a six okay yeah and star is born is just better come on you watch it you you can tell the acting is better stories i know it's better it's more coherent in, in case if i want when i watch a few videos from behind the rest of it. that's why i said i love the I opening mean, I love scene Queen too so maybe maybe that too Queen is fine but the point is uh is the way the representation of the movie and the perspective representation of the movie of Sovereign is Born is more engaging because oh, yeah. they do things like they are not done usually. They're like a little bit unconventional. It feels when I saw a clip from uh, Bohemian Rhapsody is that it's very conventionally shot. It's nothing like creative. It's just was kind of like okay. It's just And they teased David Bowie but they didn't give it to us. Which, which I'm glad. Fuck you. No, you know. If no, David, if David Bowie him. was in that movie, that would be a 7 out of 10. And that's what... They would, they would have fucking butchered him. Anyway, uh, Quiet Place, Green Book, and You Were Never Really Here. That's it. Those are my movies. I have nothing more to say. Green Book, really, I have nothing to say to it. So. I mean, it's our best picture winner. Do you want to show a bit more respect? Fuck, fuck it. Isn't it isn't it funny how we're ending it on Green Book? It's not funny. <laughs> it, it it really isn't. If it wasn't Black Panther, I would be like hell yeah, that would. Be oh funny. my god, I didn't put Black Panther. <laughs> okay, it w it would be in the in the mediocre ones. How did I miss Black Panther? I don't know. Maybe because you. I'm pathetic. You're racist. That's why. I am pathetic. It would be between Deadpool and Halloween. All right. All right, it's a wrap. We have two and a half hours of recording. 